Good morning and thank you for joining us on this exciting edition of Inside Out. Today we're joined by the Zim Moot team, the world champions. Guys, I'm so excited to have you with me. I can't even contain myself because you guys are like celebrities. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for joining us. How are you? We're good. Congratulations. Thank you. thank you so much. How do you feel? We feel um, elated. Like it's a feeling that you can't explain yeah. unless you're actually in the position. But yeah. we're all just very joyful mm -hmm. and ecstatic. It's a feeling that we can't even amount to a group of words. It's mm -hmm. absolutely extraordinary. Coach? We really do feel uh, like heroes in the moment. <laughs> but also at the same time, we also feel um very humble yeah. because we are coming from a nation that generally has supported us mm -hmm. and that support in itself only brings about humility within the team mm -hmm. and yeah there is joy there is excitement in our hearts all right um i just started off with the excitement can you kindly introduce yourselves okay um my name is ruben Bosimbi and i am the zimbabwe national mood court team captain okay i am kazaisha mcconey Mm -hmm. I am Rosa Chuchu Besai. Okay. I am Kuzo Kwashe Kuneya. All right. And I'm Majambe Richard Tatenda. I prefer the title team manager for the mood card. <laughs> <laughs> so should I call you that for the entire... <laughs> Definitely. That All right. Awesome. Welcome, guys. <laughs> Thank you. And for the benefit of the people at home, the Zimbabwe mood team clinched the world champion's title on the 2nd of July in Romania when they beat the Netherlands. The team participated in six mood card pre preliminary rounds against Scotland, the Netherlands, Poland, Romania, Switzerland, as well as Bulgaria. The Zimbabwe National High School mood team is drawn from schools including the Dominican Con Convent, Peter House, Midlands Christian College, as well as Arendelle. In May, the team was crowned world champions after winning the 2022 World Moot Court competition hosted virtually by the United States, resulting in them being invited to participate in the European Moot Court Champions in Romania, which started on June 25. Now, I'm a bit confused. You guys started off by winning the world champions, and then you had to go for the European Moot Court. Like, how does that work? Well, um, I would say participating in the International Moot Court mm -hmm. is what put us on the map for all other teams to then know that there is mooting in Zimbabwe. Okay. Because this is something that officially just started now. Mm -hmm. So it really worked in that manner. So that platform that we got uh, on the International Moot Court then got us invited to various competitions, including the European Moot Court. Mm -hmm. So I would say world stage brought about continental stage <laughs> and all other glories. Interesting. But what is a Moot Court? Because we're just talking about it. Even when we started covering you guys and running the stories, the question that we'd get from almost everyone was, what is a Moot Court? So a Moot Court is a simulated court scene. Mm -hmm. Like they have... They create cases, they mm -hmm. write cases for us, mm -hmm. and then you have your defense and your prosecution. Mm -hmm. So the students look at the case with their coaches and their teachers, and they come up with how to debate on the prosecution and how to speak for defense. Mm -hmm. Then when we do go for the competition, you speak on either side that you would have been given. Mm -hmm. So during my time, like all I'm used to, all I ever was used to was debate and public speaking. Is it the same? It is pretty much the same, uh -huh. really. What Moot Court is built on the skills you get from debating and public speaking. So okay. those skills are brought together and then you are able to moot and... Okay, to. so we mentioned um, the Dominican convent, Peter House. Um, how then do we go about, you know, drawing participants and the schools that actually participate in, in mooting? Uh, well, if we take a look at the people that were selected for this um, in Moot Court team, mm -hmm. this is the same team that participated in the International Moot Court, mm -hmm. and it was virtual. So, of course, they were looking for debaters who have experience um, in international tournaments, which are held virtually during the COVID-19 pandemic and mm -hmm. lockdown. So, if you take a look at it, most of us have participated in some of the biggest um, world debate competitions. For example, the, Ox the Oxford World Schools Debate Tournament, mm -hmm. which was in February. Um, a number of convent girls participated, and a convent team was actually the finalists mm -hmm. for this tournament, and it was held online. And we have participated in South Africa national debate schools. Mm -hmm. We've participated in the Africa Rumble. So it's like a bunch of um, tournaments that we participated in mm -hmm. that gave us the merit to be in the international mood court team. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So is it open to all schools? Because this is what some people out there may want to know. 
I went to a ghetto school in Gweru. I don't even know anything about moting. This was, this was my first time hearing about it. Someone in Uzumba, Maramba, Pungwe probably doesn't even know about moting. So does it apply to a certain group of schools or is it for everyone? Is it for every public speaker, everyone who's a debate or it's maybe for, for a certain you know, group of people? Well, as it goes, Zimbabwe is open for business. <laughs> now that everyone is familiar with Mutkut, we've mm -hmm. always been open to everyone. Mm -hmm. uh, even when we were doing team selection, we looked e in each and every school that we could certainly reach. Mm -hmm. But bearing in mind that it therefore was something that was starting and we're limited resourcefully. So okay. we just had to move around and, you know, we managed to pick people from the very few schools that we managed to attend. But most importantly, what they mentioned is what's important to then say, of those that compete in the highest level of debating, then we select. But we have plans to make sure that maybe we can have a national mood code competition where we then select um, the teams, depending with the availability of sponsors and funders and so forth. But definitely it's open to everyone now. And if anyone is watching who is willing, they mm -hmm. can like the Zimbabwe Mood Code page uh, on Facebook, on Twitter, they can follow us and they can start dropping those CVs and definitely we will get in touch. Mm -hmm. Now, Kuziva, tell me, um, you know, when I'm watching videos on TikTok, on social media, you know, most people from Europe and America seem not to know what or who Zimbabwe is. Do people know who you were and where you came from? Um, to be honest, a lot of the time we were mistaken as someone who was either American or Belgian. Mm -hmm. And with that, there was the second level of them wanting to touch our hair, which oh. was also just, <laughs> was a funny experience because like, a lot of people don't like having their hair touched, especially when you comb it, because mm -hmm. it's difficult. Then someone would just come like, oh, let me touch your hair. So it's definitely funny to deal with. Mm -hmm. And I think them knowing that Zimbabwe is there is non-existent. Oh. We did have someone who came from South Africa, mm -hmm. but even they had a blurry image of Zimbabwe in and really? of itself. So I think we just introduced the nation to them as well. Okay. Being Zimbabwean and being in a foreign land. It was amazing but it was also like getting used to the things because well for example their mm -hmm. jaywalking is illegal and okay. i'm thinking <laughs> in zimbabwe that's not illegal <coughs> but it was also an experience that um i would want most zimbabwean kids to experience to put their country on the map having people to like recognize you like zimbabwe is it is a small country but we are doing big things mm -hmm. and it's just so humbling that you're in that position so we'd want more Zimbabwean kids to be able to get that opportunity to represent their country. Mm -hmm. You said other team members are from which schools? They're from Midlands Christian College, uh, Peter House, Arundel mm -hmm. and Dominican Convent. Mm -hmm. Those are okay so now I, I want to find out about the, the preparation and the training. How often did you guys do it? How did you meet the coordination, the technicalities? How did it work? Uh, well, we would train like <coughs> it was hardcore training mm -hmm. about two to four hours a day. And as you mentioned, there are like some students who go to, for example, Midlands Christian College and they go to Peter House, mm -hmm. which is not in Harare. So most of our training was actually online. So imagine coming from school and then you have to train from like 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. or something like that. Mm -hmm. So it was very hard training and we still had to do our very best because this is world-class competitions and it is a global stage that we were given so we had to perform to the best of our abilities. Mm -hmm. How was training for you? The training was tough but mm -hmm. we knew we had to put in all our work mm -hmm. but it was also facilitated by our schools. There's Our school administrations came in together, they helped us, they assisted us. When we could meet in person Mm -hmm. Our schools made us, provided us with the environment. Mm -hmm. At times, we would sleep over at school so that we could use the entire weekend for preparations. So it was tough, but with the support we received, it was very great. And mm -hmm. we were able to persevere. We were able to go through with it because we knew that the whole nation was behind us. Okay. And as a team manager? Yes, I think that training, as they mentioned, was very tough. Mm -hmm. And we were not taking excuses as managers and as coaches. Mm -hmm. uh, we didn't want to hear people who were tired. We, in fact, they were not allowed to get tired. Because <laughs> if you want the best, then sometimes rest is not something that you get to have. So we had to push them. But indeed, we really thank the parents, the school administrators, I mean, the Dominican convent to be you know, specific, how they provided mm -hmm. us with their own school, their Wi-Fi, 
allowing us access to that school, that was just amazing. That support mm -hmm. in itself shows that as a nation, the moment that we come together as the citizenry, the government, you know, the corporate world, we can indeed bring something positive about mm -hmm. the nation. Because mm -hmm. as you saw, the team went to Europe because of a collective responsibility. Mm -hmm. It was the church, it was the banks, it was the government, His Excellency even came in. That's mm -hmm. what made the training hard, but also at the same time sweet. Mm -hmm. So what, what um, components did, the, did, you, did you really hit hard on? What is it that you were concentrating on when you were training them or when you guys were, were preparing? What is it that you can look at and say, oh, this is one, one area that they really hammered on? Anyone? Yeah. I think it, for us it was understanding what we were given. Because mm -hmm. I think a major issue that came with this competition was that they wanted us to understand the information they had given us and to see how much understanding and how much information we could really take away from that. Mm -hmm. And I think that was one of the most major things we hit upon, as well as knowing how to speak and how to interact with the judges as well which is a, another really big component, especially in the latter half, mm -hmm. when you're starting to face against bigger and better schools. Mm -hmm. And the competition itself, take us through the journey when you guys started until you actually won in Romania. Oh, well, if we're to take a look at it, of mm -hmm. course, um, we were really out of our comfort zone because like we mentioned earlier on, we were the minority for the first time in a certain community. And I remember for our first moot round in Romania, this was the same case that we used for the international moot court competition. Mm -hmm. And everyone knew our arguments. That's okay. the first thing. Because for the international moot court, they recorded every single um, uh, round. So everyone knew our arguments. And of course, people studied our arguments as we had won the previous one. So mm -hmm. I think you can imagine how um, you hearing your winning argument from another team and now you have to come up with a better argument. So it was like a moment of realization where we realized that we have to go beyond whatever we offered for the international mood court in mm -hmm. order to make it through the European mood court. Mm -hmm. But from the first round, it was absolutely a surreal as mm -hmm. it was um, a really taxing moment where we realized that huh, you know no one is in the dark anymore mm -hmm. and as each round progressed it tested us on um, a higher level till we got to the final so it was like we were progressing on a scale till we reached the very top mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the preparations for you well the preparations they were tough but what like um the captain said we were trying to push ourselves because like she said people were taking our arguments now mm -hmm. so it was now a matter of getting better arguments and correcting the mistakes we had made in the international moot court because mm -hmm. we did get some feedback from the judges so it was now a matter of hammering on all the mistakes we made and trying to perfect everything mm -hmm. and in the end it it was worth it because we won okay mm -hmm. so what i understand now is that a moot court is an assimilation of the real court but what does it help what does it prepare one for and i also want to understand like what what do you guys do are you are you all art students are you sciences students are you commercial students because one may just think okay for one to participate in debates there eh, you just have to be an art student and probably end up being a lawyer or someone who's in communications so what are your backgrounds and what are you being prepared for what is the end game with this um, for me, I'm a science student mm -hmm. and I study for software engineering, okay. but I believe that the mood court competition just helps us give us a grounding in law because I understand that law in and of itself is a very interesting field and we understand how much it can give us mm -hmm. if we fully explore it and I think it's really helpful there. Okay. Um, for me, I'm an art student and this competition has really helped me because I want to go into law when I grow up so it has prepared me for what's to come in university because moot is originally for law students okay. so now when i go to university at least i am at least a level higher than my fellow colleagues because mm -hmm. of the what this moot court has offered me okay well i am a business student and i also want to go into fashion okay. but i I believe that these clubs and also these competitions that you are usually seen as to belong to the art students mm -hmm. should not really be classified as such. Because yes, you might be studying the sciences, the businesses, but what you gain from these clubs, the skills you gain will always be useful to you in whatever field you decide to go into. Mm -hmm. So from debating, you gain 
oratory skills, argumentation skills, how to deliver speeches, how to speak, how to present yourself, which is the same for mooting. Mm -hmm. Since we do get asked questions by the judges during our speeches, you mm -hmm. also learn how to interact with them, how to answer questions directly. So I believe that no matter what you're studying, no matter what mm -hmm. field you want to go into, these clubs and these competitions are still very useful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, as for me, I'm also one of the sciences students and I actually want to study cardiothoracic surgery. Okay. And um, I believe that Mooting has shown me that um, as students and as young people, we can be very multi-talented. Like um, Kudzaishe mentioned, we aren't stuck to one specific path and mm -hmm. we can diversify our dreams and our career choices. Mm -hmm. And I think my favorite experience from this whole Moot Court um, journey was that uh, we can literally use we learned how to use international humanitarian law okay. because we were arguing a case that had to do with the war criminal mm -hmm. and we were i remember we, when we were on defense we used to think that we couldn't win on defense because it was obvious that the guy killed people okay. but then it showed us that like no matter which angle you look at it people criminals can actually go scot-free so that was quite cool so <laughs> so um i believe that it really diversified our options and maybe um if i have time we're still very young mm -hmm. even if i pursue medicine and even if i become a cardiothoracic surgeon i can still do law maybe in my later Probably. life you yeah can. and even medical <laughs> law is very yeah, possible it is so yeah i think mm -hmm. it just really showed us that we aren't stuck to one path and we can very much be as colorful as we can be interesting the team manager, what is it that you do professionally? So uh, I happen to be a teacher professionally, okay. a scientist teacher, natural scientist oh. teacher. Actually, yeah? <laughs> if you want physics, chemistry lessons, I can give you those. Please, Definitely. even math. I also happen to be a politician. <laughs> I did study politics and public administration oh, okay. and slash political analyst. Okay. But I would say that it's an interesting journey, you know, traveling with these kids and learning about law, which in itself is maybe steered a little bit of making me maybe want to yeah. study law. And I'm seriously considering joining law school next year, but not to practice, but just for the interest because I believe that we are now at a time where you can't be confined to one specific field and say oh no I'm, I'm just that guy who teaches sciences and say things are okay I think we are in an era where you can diversify mm -hmm. I think there is a world where law is now major in each and every uh, you know mm -hmm. sector there is now in your own field there's media law experts now I mean yeah, yeah. so that's something that we have definitely learned and mm -hmm. we now know that we can diversify and I'm always telling them that there's no limit that should come to you on the basis of what you studied. Mm -hmm. It's all about sometimes passion, what you can do. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, you know, the things that you can do, what you're talented in could actually be that one big break that you need. Mm -hmm. Look at them, science students now on TV, simply because they are orators. And mm -hmm. that's the drive that they all should right. keep in. Okay, so then how do you guys uh, balance studying and being members of the mood court? I see you guys have had a lot of accolades. You're the golf captain, guitar leader, you're into golf, debate, swimming, your house sister, squash captain, allied arts, quiz, debate, speech and drama. You guys are into a lot of things and you also have your social lives. How do you balance that? Well, I think it comes with passion mm -hmm. and love. Whatever I go into and whatever my friends go into, we always make sure that we're, we love it and we're interested in it. Mm -hmm. And we're very determined and we're very hardworking. Mm -hmm. So we do have our time for school. We make sure we still focus on that and we don't get carried away with the other things. But uh, also we make sure that we do have these extracurricular activities because right now it's not all about how many A's do you have and mm -hmm. that's it. But you need to have something out there that is different, something that helps you, that's something that gives you a higher step puts you on a higher level mm -hmm. so we do make sure that we have timetables that we create so that when you are at your extra colleague through this you're mm -hmm. focused on that but when it's time to study you also focus on that and do your best mm -hmm. how do you balance it um, for me I think it's personally about sacrificing certain things mm -hmm. like um, if I used to hang out with my friends maybe per month I'd go out with them three weekends mm -hmm. I was now sacrificing to maybe two or one weekend uh, so that I have time to study during the weekend or I have time to focus on my other extra uh, curricular activities because at the end of the day if you want to look for a scholarship or when we're now applying for universities these are the things that are going to help us our extracurricular uh, curricular activities and also our final grades mm -hmm. so it's also about you need to be willing to sacrifice certain things mm -hmm. like she said you need to love those things in order to sacrifice a few things mm -hmm. you deem not as important our software engineer 
Um, to be <laughs> honest, for me, it came down to time management, like we said. For me, it was all about making sure that if I really wanted to be in this situation, like, we are a good team. I personally fully believe that right now we are one of the best mood teams that high school can produce. Mm -hmm. And that also comes with the amount of training that we have to do every day and the amount of studying we have to do to maintain that standard in mm -hmm. every aspect of our life. So it comes down to how many hours you're willing to put into the things that build your future, which are, in this situation, mood and academics. Mm -hmm. Okay, so when we started, I remember telling you guys that, you know, when I started hearing about the mood court, I just thought, oh, well, you know, maybe it's just one of those things. Because you know how Zimbabweans are with most of our teams. Um, I don't know if this is a fair statement, but most of us are used to disappointment, you know, when it comes to soccer, you know, a lot of things. So you guys really raised the country's flag high. But did you at any moment think that you were going to make it when you went there? Did you go there, go there with uh, that winning spirit or... Um. Like the judge uh, who gave us the verdict at the end of the tournament after our final round, Vladimirov, Misha Vladimirov, he is a judge of the ICC and he also made like um, the Yugoslavia Tribunal. Mm -hmm. His In his statement um, of our, when he was summarizing how we won, he mentioned that the moment we started, we were in the winning mood, okay. which I believe is quite true because I think, like I said, we're generally spirited people, like it's in our culture and there's no moment where we felt inferior, but there's also no moment where we were overboard. We remained humble because of course, everyone was mentioning, oh, you guys won, you guys are the champions and so mm. forth. But I think we kept our cool and we just did what we had to do. And we, it didn't stop us from socializing with everyone because we were champions. We just socialized with everyone mm -hmm. and we kept the spirit. We trained even in the evening we would just put in training hours because funny enough that side the sun sets at 10 p.m oh. so you can imagine how long the days were mm -hmm. but we managed to put in training time late at night and early in the morning and we still had the winning spirit that we could indeed do it if we did it last time what stops us now mm -hmm. so we were all right and you guys met the president how did you feel i think it was an, a surreal experience because mm -hmm. like we all know that's our president but no common citizens like one day I'm going to meet our president and shake his hand. You yeah. Know? Like it's nothing that really comes into mind. Mm -hmm. And like when it happened, I think for me it was more of like a shock because I realized just how big what we did actually was now. Mm. Like you realize we really did something incredible. And yeah. that was just a wonderful experience in and of itself. Mm -hmm. How did you feel meeting the president? It was such an honoring moment. I just remember seeing him there sitting and I'm like, wow, <laughs> I'm really <laughs> meeting the president. So it was such an honoring and humbling experience because I'm like, at least I got to experience this and I will make sure to utilize every opportunity I, go I get and to mm. work hard to win the competition because it's not every day that you meet the president and the president offers to help you. Mm. So when the president offers to help you, you make sure you do everything you can in order to, to win in this case. Mm -hmm. So the short time that you met him, you know, most of us just from seeing him on TV, we can say that the president is quite humorous because he throws jokes a lot of times. <laughs> Did he do that with, with you guys? Yes. Oh, a whole lot. Yeah. Like, yeah. It was just laughs throughout. He mm -hmm. was so... Chilled. Oh, chilled, <laughs> really. He was so chilled. Yeah. So he was just throwing in jokes in there. It was just a normal conversation. It wasn't like a question and answer type of thing. Mm. He asked us what we like to do in school. Mm. Then he told us about his life as well. Okay. And it was just and it was just jokes throughout. So he it was just so comforting. Like it was like we're at home. We're just okay. sitting with our dad and we're having <laughs> some time. So it was really great. Yeah. <laughs> And I feel like one of the things that I really liked the most was when we told him our dreams and our hopes. Mm. And it just showed me um, a wider scope of how, like, once you tell someone uh, your dreams and your aspirations and you actually show that person that you can do it, they can bring your dream to life if you show that you're capable. Mm -hmm. So he really just, like, he was very interested in what the youth, I think, when we were in the state house i don't know i have this element of like whenever i'm put in a position right i'm representing more people other than myself mm -hmm. so i felt like when he was asking us questions he was also asking for the youth in zimbabwe to know what they could possibly be interested in so mm -hmm. that he can provide for that and like my friend because said uh, it was like we're talking to our grandfather mm -hmm. who was really just generally interested in our dreams and our mm -hmm. hopes and mm -hmm. yes yeah, so it basically made us hopeful 
-hmm. because he is the president after all and yeah. we are going to be contributing to this country mm -hmm. and we're going to come back and we're going to work in this country so it made us hopeful mm -hmm. and hopefully yeah we can you guys are already contributing like you're ambassadors <laughs> so that, you know that's that's great and you know for now i think that's enough mm -hmm. is it possible with the time that we have i mean i think we only have five minutes i, mean, I don't know team manager can you come up with a topic mm -hmm. can we put them against each other maybe two against each other in just a few minutes if it is possible but if it isn't it's okay i understand i just want to get a, a feel of the mood court all right so you want them to debate on um legal case or anything mm -hmm. just anything all right ladies you know i'm all about fairness you pick your topic and you ah, exactly <laughs> Uh, well, uh, should we should we just we, since we're like it's four of us, we can just give a brief summary of the case we actually had. Yeah, and I then, think that would be And fair. then each of us just gives like an introductory statement. So uh, I would propose we do this two for defense, two for prosecution, and mm -hmm. I believe there is an agent one in each and every you know tree mm -hmm. in like geo. So yeah, the thing is doable. All right. So you All just right. use the very so same just thing. So to the cameras. Yeah, great. definitely you do that. Yeah. Edit. Uh, cause cause you can give the summary of the case yes. roughly in thirty seconds. Okay, we're here today because we understand that General Benedict Durant has been accused of four major crimes. The crime of aggression, the war crime of treacherously killing, the crime of excessive incidental death, damage and injury. And for us to understand if we truly and utterly have admissibility and jurisdiction of this case. Am I on defense? Yeah. Prosecution. <laughs> okay prosecution so i'll be arguing on agent two of prosecution which will be on the war crime of attacking civilians and civilian objects so we as prosecution submit that general durant that the war crimes general durant has been accused of are validated according to the elements of each and every of each war crime mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I will be arguing as Agent 1 on defense, and according to Article 17A of the Rome Statute, which states that a case is inadmissible when there is a state that is ready and willing to prosecute, that makes this case inadmissible before this court because Athar is ready and willing to prosecute, and according to the principle of complementarity that the Rome Statute stands by, Athar should be allowed to prosecute the case, and this case should not proceed to trial with the ICC. Mm -hmm. I will be doing about Agent 3 defense. We believe as per defense that General Benedict Durant is actually not guilty because he did not do anything outside of the scope and he actually did everything in his power to make sure that none of the actions were done and he did not actually purposely target civilians. I will be speaking on Agent 3 under the war crime of aggression and we submit to this court that Viscaria did indeed attack Arthur and Arthur was acting in self-defense according to Article 51 of the United Nations Charter and we also submit that General Durant attacked the territory of Arthur which is in constituent to the war crime of aggression and the war crime of aggression is a violation of the UN Charter and Arthur was now acting in self-defense. Ladies and gentlemen, as the presenter, all I know is that the team captain was defending a murderer. <laughs> 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 I mean, that's, that's all I got, guys. But yeah, you guys are good. And you actually gave me a feel of, you know, the mood cut or the roll cut or generally just a cut. <laughs> so where to from now? You guys are the world champions. You know, how long do you have the title and just what's the journey from here? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, we are holding on to the IMC title for the next two years because it's something that's done once after every two years. And we are also holding on to the European Mint Code for another year until, you mm -hmm. know, they have another one. But basically for now, we would say that besides the plans that we have to actually have an, an, a national Mint Code competition, we are going back to our debates okay. and the, all of the teams the, the p teams that are represented here are going to the Tanzanian Nationals in August okay. which uh, Dominican Convent is you know the defending champion and they get to get to defend as well as you know Peter House maybe they can snatch it away this time around <laughs> but yeah what's next is dominating more tournaments as Zimbabweans and like I have stated we already have a Tanzanian National Schools you know mm. uh, trophy with us so what's next is getting more tournaments and probably adding to that feel good factor once more to the nation and we just hope you don't become a murderer in hopes that will defend you <laughs> <laughs> hopefully not yeah. all right as we conclude um your final words to 
the people of Zimbabwe or other students like you who are in marginalized schools or who just know about debate and public speaking, they know nothing about the moot court, or someone out there who's not even confident enough to, to speak or to articulate matters, you know, someone who's looking at you and admiring you, because you guys are probably role models right now as we speak. What do you have to say to, to your peers? Um, <laughs> so for me it's more about like don't lose faith in yourself for me i came to convent uh dominican convent this year mm -hmm. uh, so i came in my last sixth year so it was very hard for me to like make it out because you're a new student but i somehow made it and that's me saying don't like lose hope on yourself or give up easily like always b if you can do something fight for that opportunity and showcase your talent because you never know where it will take you. Mm -hmm. So to sum it up, every opportunity you get in life, grab it because you don't know where to lead you. Okay. Um, and I also feel like um, in life in general, once you have a passion and once you have something that you truly love, you should continuously stick with it and always pray about it because this wouldn't have been possible without God's assistance always pray about what you have the gifts that you have identify your talents and just breathe life into them and also always remember that as a nation we are one and we are one as a whole mm -hmm. so as a nation we can do so many beautiful things together we have so much talent so never get discouraged that ah, oh, you're from zimbabwe therefore something isn't possible anything is possible if you put your mind to it and if you pray about it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. well firstly to the nation of zimbabwe on behalf of the team, I would like to say thank you to the nation, to His Excellency, and to our sponsors. Mm -hmm. Then to everyone else out there who has watched us, who has gained interest into this, I would say keep going. Find your way, find your breaking point. If you can't get in through the door, get in through the window because there's always a way in. Don't <laughs> give up, fight for what you love, fight for what you want to be, no matter where you are, no matter what situation you're in, you can always break through and you can always make it. And the nation of Zimbabwe, as you can see from us, is always right behind you. I don't know what you guys are on about. She was defending a murderer. There you are telling people <laughs> to break through windows. <laughs> Did you? Uh, for me personally, I think that if you're someone with a talent or you're gifted with something, hmm. sharpen it and make it your weapon. Because yeah. at the end of the day, all of us have things that we're talented in. But if you really want to break through, like my teammates have said, you have to sharpen it. So work every day, have a work ethic, understand what you want with your life, understand what you want with everything else, and just make sure that what you have is something that will make you shine. That's about it for me. Uh, team manager. Definitely. I would also you know, push for the same thing, that's don't ever stop believing yourself. Mm -hmm. I started debating in primary. Okay. I debated in high school, I debated in universities, and went on to have you know, various achievements, best mm -hmm. Zimbabwean debater and so forth. Oh. But I never stopped believing that it's possible to conquer the world, mm -hmm. which is now happening as a coach and no longer as a debater or as a motor. Mm -hmm. But if you have a passion for something, mm -hmm. keep pushing. And definitely, you know, the world notices talent and passion. Mm -hmm. That's the drive. You remain in that drive and you're good to go. All right. Thank you guys for having joined us. Thank you for coming. I know you guys just jetted into the country yesterday. You must be very tired. So this means a lot to us that you just gave us your time. You, know, you managed to come here and just talk to us. So we're humbled, especially because you guys are world champions. I mean, you could have decided to do something else with your time, but you came here. So thank you very much. And uh, once again, um, congratulations. Thank, thank you. you so much for having us. <laughs> it was a pleasure, believe me. I wish you guys could just come back even tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> And once again, thank you so much for having joined us on Inside Out. Today we're joined by the world champions, the Zim Mood team. They represented us in Romania and they came home with the trophy. So yes, these guys are ambassadors. They represented us and we hope that everyone who's been watching and all the students out there went to debate, went to public speaking. If you love communication by any means or you, want to feel, you feel like you want to just improve your communication skills, these are the guys to talk to. This is the team manager. These guys can make your dream come true. Yeah, we meet again hopefully next week. I'm excited. Pleasant viewing. <laughs> Thank you guys. Thank you so much.